car. The Southern 500 is the second trip of the racing season to Darlington, and that gives the drivers a chance to be better after running in the spring in the Rebel 500. And with the new downsized cars this year, we asked some of the drivers if they felt more confident at the Southern 500 than they did at the Rebel. Well, yeah, I think uh, the week has proven that. Uh, there's been very little excitement, so to speak, uh, during the week, uh, and everybody's pretty well got the cars dialed in, handled a little better, and I think it's going to be one heck of a race. I think so, yeah. Most of the drivers, I believe, are more confident this time. They all got them running better and handling better than they did the first time. And I think it's going to be a good race. Over. Well, there's no doubt, you know, we've got the cars dialed in a good bit more. We've ran several more races. The cars performing more so like the big cars used to do. So uh, uh, the racing is probably going to be a little bit tougher than it was the first race. The guys' cars are handling better, and in turn, the competition going to be a little bit tougher. Well, you know, I think that we all have the small cars working a little better, but uh, I still doubt that they're as comfortable as like the Monte Carlos and stuff were back then, but we do have them much better. I think so. Uh, for me, it's been my second time on a racetrack, and it definitely helps being here for a second time. You're more aware of what you know the race is going to be like. And I think the more we run the little cars at these type of racetracks, the more we learn about them. Yeah, I believe they got them working pretty good now, you know. So I don't believe there'll be no problem. Defending champion, how do you feel about two in a row, Terry? I'm going to try. <laughs> Except for the rain, I'm ready to go. <laughs> How's the car been handling this week? So far, so good. But, you know, once the race starts, a whole new ball game anyway. And we'll just have to wait and see what happens during the race. Well, we are, see. So, you know, things are looking real good uh, for us so far. Uh, we haven't won a race yet this year, but maybe maybe Dolan will be our first. Things are working real good. Yeah, we seem to have them worked out pretty well now. We, uh... We come here pretty confident that we could make the car work good, and uh, it seems to be doing a good job for us. Well, I would have to say that, yeah, because these guys have been running some, uh, that, uh, quite a bit more, but I haven't, so uh, the car is handling pretty good, so we, we feel like we're more comfortable. When the green flag fell at noon yesterday, Harry Gant ducked down on the inside and showed his bumper to the rest of the field for the first 31 laps of the race. Gant, who is from Taylorsville, North Carolina, was confident that he could put his car into victory lane. And in the early going, he ran strong, very strong. Keel Yarborough, the only four-time winner of the Southern 500, was second in the early going. He ran second for 31 laps until he passed Gant and took the lead. But it was not to be for the driver from Timmonsville, as he ran up front for only 23 laps. And when he lost the top spot back to Gant on lap 56, he was not to be heard from for the rest of the day. Benny Parsons was the first of the big-name drivers to go, and when he put his car behind the wall, Cecil Chandler talked with the veteran driver from Ellaby, North Carolina. Benny, what happened? You're out. You tried to get back in. What happened? I don't really know, Cecil. Jumped out of the but on seven cylinders. We sure it, wasn't, it wasn't anything simple, so we don't know what it was. No way you can get it back together for today. Gant and Yarborough were battling tooth and nail in the first 67 trips around the Darlington track. Neil Bonnet was hanging on to the third position from which he had started when the green flag fell. And then on lap 70, Bonnet came running to the front for seven laps after a brief appearance at the head of the pack by Dave Marcus and Bobby Allison. Slick Johnson of Florence, who had started in the 24th spot, was the next driver to leave the race. He departed on lap number 67 when he blew an engine. The engine let go halfway down the back straightaway. The car was running good and handling pretty good, but we were just sitting out there riding, trying to make a good finish. They just dropped a valve or something. On lap 78, Gant resumed the lead, and it looked like he was going to win and win big. He walked off from the rest of the field for the next 21 laps until Bonnet came back into the picture to challenge for the top position. And he took it back on lap 105, and he stayed there until lap 116. And then he and Gant and Richard Petty fought over the lead for the next 47 trips around the famed Darlington Oval. They say that races, at least the close ones, are one in the pits. We put the clock on Harry Gant and the Scroll Bandit when he pitted early in the race under the green. A number of cars are coming in now for pit stops. This is one of the most important parts during a race. There we go. The Skull Bandit is in.
five seconds, and Harry Gant is back in the race. He's moving. Kyle Petty left the race on lap number 133 when he, too, lost an engine, and he talked with us after he put number 42 behind the wall for the afternoon. We were running good. What happened? I don't know, I guess it broke a rod or something. Uh, it just, the motor just blew coming off four, and there wasn't really much you could do about it. On lap 164, Neil Bonnet came to the front of the pack, and everyone was wondering if he would be the man that would stay there for a while. And it seemed that up until that point in the race, no one could hang on to the top spot for any reasonable length of time and soon dispelled any thoughts that anyone else might have taken the top spot away from him. He showed his bumper to the field for the rest of the day, and with the exception of some changes in the standings caused by pit stops, the man from Hueytown, Alabama, was in the driver's seat for the rest of the race. Richard Petty, who left for several laps early in the race, had to leave on lap 278, and he talked about what happened to him. Thank you, right now. Oh, I did. Lucky enough that it broke coming off the corner instead of going in. That way I was able to get down without, you know, getting oil on the track. No way you could get it back together today. Uh, when it breaks, uh, it ain't nothing to do with it. When lap 300 rolled around, Bonnet was leading with Dave Marcus second, Darrell Walter third, Terry Levante fourth, and David Pearson fifth. Walter had not been noticed much all afternoon, but he had to quietly slip from his starting spot of tenth to the third position for the stretch battle. Piloting the Mountain Dew machine, Walter challenged Bonnet for the lead, and it looked like the youngest member of the Alabama gang had an easy one in his reach. But then on lap 247, Gary Ballou spun out, and that brought out the last caution of the day. And with the yellow flag out, it allowed Walter, Baker, Marcus, and Levante to pull right up on Bonnet's bumper. And when the green flag came back out, Bonnet managed to shake all of them but Walter, and Darrell stayed there right to the finish. But the day had been a good one for Neil Bonnet, and he was not to be denied. He took the white flag, and one lap later, he took the checkered flag and won the 1981 edition of the famed Southern 500. He led on seven occasions on the afternoon for a total of 216 laps, and his average speed was 126.446 miles per hour. And when he turned his car into the winner's circle, it was the first time he'd been there since 1980 when he won at Talladega. And it was not hard to see that Neil Bonnet was a happy young man yesterday. You know, this Thunderbird, the Wood Brothers, has been so close to winning races all year. And we've uh, fell out of races. And, you know, now to win a race with the Woods and National Engineer and Warner Hodgson, you know, it's awful nice to win a race. And we had a big lead there, but it takes a little bit away when the caution come out. But then to win it as close as it was, it's better for the fans. And I know I'll enjoy it a lot more. Actually, what were your feelings when your mirror filled up? With one Daryl Walter in that number 11 Mountain Duke machine. Well, everybody here knows the kind of competitor Daryl is. If there's any way to win the race, you know, he's going to run the car as ragged as he could and do one heck of a job in his car. And I felt like the place he would try me would be in the middle of three and four, and all I could do was on that last lap was try to pick the best part of that corner and use it. Did you play a little along the way? Yeah, I tell you what, I, I feel like something sure helped us. 